Yes. Um, I was told to make this accessible and that I wouldn't necessarily know who was in the audience. So what I thought I would do is try and just illustrate a couple of points which, surprisingly, even when we get to postgraduate level, we go and do something like path analysis and we forget about. Um, or we go to, say, GPs and we give them a design and they say, oh, no, we can't afford that. You'll need to do uh, something a bit smaller than that. So I'm trying to warn you against that, go, giving in to that. So it's either, I was hoping it was going to be four studies and a conclusion, rather like four weddings and a funeral, but it became five studies and four conclusions, or three Davids and a stalk, I noticed. So I'm going to talk about a genuine study from David Wood's work, uh, then an illustrative study about why we can't make, why we can't draw too many conclusions from the first study, a hypothetical follow-up that David might have done, and an illustrative study from another David, David Duncan, which shows, again, there's a problem with that design. And then finally, study two, which David Wood did do, and then the four conclusions. OK, well, David did a lot of research looking at Vygotsky's ideas um, about how children learn. And he'd already set children of three to four a particular task, which was, in one case, it was assembling a, a pyramid based up, made up of uh, different sized uh, blocks of wood. So he, he got parents to help children. And this was just a natural observation. It wasn't that he was, uh, that he was asking them to take a particular style. And from that, he was able to identify five basic styles, ranging from the very general sort of you know, have a go to the put this together with that and so on, and demonstrating it completely. And the outer ones, sort of general verbal encouragement and specific verbal instructions, and demonstrating the operation completely, were pretty useless as methods. But contingent teaching, by which he means sort of moving between the sort of middle points, and if a child is OK with that particular level, then you drop back a bit and see whether they can cope. And if they can't, you come forward again with a bit more detail. So that's, that's what was found. So we found that there's a relationship between parental teaching style and child success in, in natural observations. But we don't know whether teaching style affects child success, because these, these were the parents. So the parents have learnt a, possibly a particular approach with their children. Um, they might know that that particular style doesn't work with the child, so they'll try another, t another method. And they have developed a way of dealing with the children. Now, I wanted a, a ridiculous example of this point, And I remember that years ago, I'd, I'd given them one. So where do children come from? Hypothesis one, stalks. Hypothesis two, gooseberry bushes. We gather evidence, which I found in an old book. And this was the relationship between the number of stalks observed and the population in this particular area. And you can see there's a, it's not a perfect straight line, but the more stalks, the more the population. Well, we've got a, a relationship again, but there are all sorts of possible explanations for this. And the simplest one is that humans build dwellings, stalks like and even in this case, you can see that they've actually built an area that the storks could uh, put their nest on. So basically, more houses, more storks. So relationships, correlation does not show causality. And as I say, we all learn that early on. 
and we go on to do something like path analysis or structural equation modeling, and we say, oh, look, that causes that. No, you've just looked at a relationship between two things. So we need some sort of intervention. So let's take a hypothetical study. This is what David Wood could have done. He could have said, okay, well, it looks as if the contingent method is the optimal method. So what I'll do is I've, I've observed parents who, who do it naturally. Let's see what happens if I train people up and I then um, get them to use it and I'll measure performance of the children again. More children succeed. Great. But what have we learned from it? I would say if, that, if you did that hypothetical study, you've learned the square root of nothing. Um, why doesn't it give you more? Well, this illustration makes, makes a point about sort of the validity of designs. And David Duncan was an occupational psychologist and he told the story about how he'd been brought in to a particular firm to try and stop the, the high turnover they'd got. So he designed a way of trying to improve this and lower turnover. Great. But what have we learned from that? What, what did he learn? He at least had the grace to realize that really he hadn't learned too much from it. I mean, he had succeeded in doing what he'd been asked to do. But why haven't we learned more than that? Could he not just go into another firm and, and do the same sort of thing? Because things happen. So you do an intervention and you, you're not in control of what's going on. So David Wood might have uh, designed his intervention and there'd been a change in schools or in uh, play groups about how children were, were uh, interacted with. And in the case of David Duncan's work, he put it down to recession, or in our case now, austerity. Because if, you, if it's very risky to go and leave your job, or you just can't find another one because they're, they aren't out there, you're going from a, a relatively comfortable job that you're a bit dissatisfied to one where it's a zero hours contract, and that's all there is available, then you're not going to move. So therefore, there are alternative explanations for why um, he might have succeeded. So, conclusion three, a one-group intervention doesn't establish causality. Now, I keep coming across cases where people want to do research, um, and particularly if they're doing practical research, and I mentioned GPs, but there are other cases um, where they come to me and they say, look, the ideal would be some sort of intervention with, um, with a contrast group, a control group, or whatever. But the people who are funding this, or the people who want me to do the work, say, we can't afford that. We just need to just do the intervention. Well, it doesn't establish causality. And in fact, it doesn't tell you very much, because you could find you did your intervention, things were worse. Did your intervention, no change. Did your intervention, there was an improvement. You have learned nothing because you don't know what would have happened if your intervention hadn't occurred. Time has passed, other things have happened. So what David Wood did do is an intervention with more than one group. So he actually trained people in the five different st styles and in the contingent style, and then saw what happened when they worked with children. And as before, the contingent style was the best style. And you could transfer from that um, to, to other tasks. So my conclusions are, just keep it in mind, you were taught it in sort of year one probably, of undergraduate research methods. Correlation doesn't show causality even if you're using some sophisticated method like multi-level modeling or something, it's still not necessarily demonstrating causality. You need some sort of intervention. 
but a one-group intervention doesn't establish causality. You need some sort of comparison group to protect against what's going on outside your, your study. 